and call this meeting of the Conroe Independent School District Board of Trustees to order. Let the record show that a quorum of members is present, that this meeting has been duly called, and that notice of this meeting has been posted in accordance with Texas Open Meetings Act, Texas Government Code Chapter 551. The time is now 6 o'clock. Please uh, join us in standing while Mr. Husbands leads us in the invocation and Mr. Kidd in the pledge. If you wish to, please bow in prayer with me. Our most gracious God, thank you for the blessings you bestowed upon this district. We pray at this business meeting that our words, our actions, and decisions are all pleasing in your sight. We ask that you grant uh, each educator and each child a fun but safe summer. Bring them back uh, with a renewed vigor to achieve their goals and to learn with amazement and and achieve the success in their dreams we'd also offer up a prayer for those who are defending our freedom keep them safe and give them a peace about their difficult duty again we thank you for the blessings that you bestowed upon this district and this board amen Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Honor the Texas flag, I pledge allegiance to thee, Texas, one state, under God, one and indivisible. Thank you, Mr. Husband and Mr. Kidd. Um, item 2A, Conroe ISD Education Foundation update. Dr. Stockton. Great. We are honored tonight to have the president of the foundation, Ms. Nelda Blair, here to update us. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, we come once a year, as you guys know, to update you on the Conroe ISD Education Foundation. We have a very exciting report tonight. It's in front of each of you. You'll be happy to know I'm not going to go through and read this whole thing because it's thicker, you will also notice, than it's ever been. Um, but I'll tell you a little bit about that. That front page is basically an overview of the foundation since 2001 and how many scholarships are pending, how many have been given out. I'm not going to go through that whole thing, but what I do want to tell you is that we had an in incredibly record-breaking year on scholarships this year. 161 teacher and student scholarships were given out. And I'll point uh, on that front page to that second line, continuing education scholarships. A lot of it was right there. In 2017, as you see, 126 of your uh, employees were given scholarships to further their education, either uh, paraprofessional per scholarships to reach uh, full degrees, or the huge majority of them were already degreed employees, any employee, um, who wanted to make a ma get a master's or a PhD, we're helping them do that. And so we are improving CISD assets as fast as we can. Uh, the second page is, is also kind of an update on what's going on with the Education Foundation. As you know, we give welcome back scholarships. Those are Conroe ISD graduates who come back to work at Conroe ISD. We give them a $100 sign-on bonus as a welcome back when they come. It's one of our most popular programs, <laughs> believe it or not. Also, I invite you to take a look at our website. At long last, we have finally had our website overhauled by a foundation company, of all people. Um, you'll take a look. It looks great. You can also donate online, which is a first, and we're very excited about that. Right there are our breakfast totals. Right underneath that, you'll see that on, under the gross, we've just continued to do very, very well. We've, uh, we broke the $200,000 mark last year and, again, broke it this year. Um, you'll see that our uh, net is down just a little bit as we've improved our uh, AV, which has cost us a little more. And we also lost a major sponsor this year, which was, uh, which was down, made us go down a little bit. But then we gained a couple of others. So um, as overall, things are, are pretty much even with this. We expect to continue to break the $200,000 mark as years go forward. That's a lot of money to make in one morning at a breakfast. Mm -hmm. As you know, that's our only yes. fundraiser. On pages uh, three, and four are the, all the names, that's why I'm not going through them, but that's all the students that we uh, awarded scholarships to. I'll give you a chance to go through those at your leisure. And pages five, six, seven, eight, and nine are all of your employees 
that receive scholarships this year. We wanted to put them all down so that you could see the variety of schools they come from and the variety of people that are <coughs> awarded scholarships, not just teachers, it's all employees. We're very proud of that. And um, the final page is the uh, sponsors, the major sponsors to our scholarship breakfast. And so we want to be sure that you know the folks that are supporting this foundation. And I did miss one thing on the front page. I want you to know that at the very bottom, you'll, it's not there, it's on the second page. At the very bottom, you'll see we have um, over $150,000 in our operating account, but well, uh, over $600,000 in a CD, put, and that's after we've paid out all our scholarships. So the, uh, the Education Foundation operates on a very small shoestring. We also, um, not only do we give out scholarships to every employee that applies, that qualifies, but we also try to do that with the students that qualify as well. So we're doing very well financially. Having given out the scholarships, we still have that in reserve and we're still going strong. So any questions? I'll just okay. have a comment. Thank you for all that you do and all that's done. It's a great thing when we can have our own staff know that there's opportunities to further their education and we just appreciate all that and they are very grateful i have to tell you they we get a lot of uh, we, we try to send them forward but we get emails and notes and phone calls and some of them are in tears they're so excited about that so they're all going to school this summer that's great. So, that's, that's great. thank you thank you i yeah, appreciate it right, thank you all right items uh two b through f i'm gonna have Dr. Stockton go ahead and start with those. <laughs> well, I'm going to I'm going to turn it over to Coach Schmidt, who is the head football coach and athletic director for the Woodlands Feeder, and he is here to introduce our coaches and our recipients. Yep. Thank you, Dr. Stockton. Thank you, members of the board. Uh, it's an honor to be here uh, when one of your programs uh, has reached the pinnacle of success that uh, our boys track team did this uh, this past uh, this past spring. Uh, they were the 6A uh, boys uh, track and field state champions. Uh, and along the way, uh, they crowned three individuals and one relay team uh, and, and ultimately won the, the team title. Uh, to introduce those guys and the coaches that uh, were part of that is our head coach, Jarris Green. Good evening, everyone. Dr. Stockton, it's, it, it's a pleasure to be back here again, and, and certainly in the spring, this is not one I thought I would ever be standing in recognition of and, and highlighting athletes. Winning a state track title is pretty difficult indeed. Um, it's not just about getting people there, it's about the right combination against the other competitors who are there that year, and it changes every year. Uh, it, it's special to me as well to have Coach Schmidt here uh, go along. I'll go back a long way with Coach Schmidt. He was my 10th grade biology teacher, and I'm trying to highlight how old he is. Uh, uh, he was a, a, a coach on our 1999 Texas State uh, Champion team as well, the only other one that we've won as well. So it's special to me that he's here as well. Um, and to be working under an athletic director that creates such a culture that he does, um, that, that there really is no ceiling on achievement. Um, it, it's, I, I said back in the fall, I recall, when we were here for my cross-country group, that it was a special time to be walking down the Highlander Athletic Hallway, and, and the spring was really no different. Uh, our, our track state title was just uh, one of a lot of great things that happened on our campus. Uh, our, our state meet efforts um, is one that I won't forget for a long time. Uh, when you have all the athletes who go and participate either meet or exceed their expectations in, in what is probably the most difficult state meet to qualify for across the country with how Texas has uh, set out those qualification standards, the, the, the UIL. Um, uh, it, we, we started with our 3,200 meter runner. He was picked fifth. He placed fifth against four other guys who beat him at the, at the Texas cross country meet, a uh, state meet. Uh, he, he was fifth there as well. Uh, one of the best distance years uh, in, in Texas history. He, he places fifth to get our two points. Uh, then Adrian Pippery steps up in the shot put. And, and again, when you have a special athlete like him who's in the top five ever uh, high school shot putters uh, ever in the history of the sport in this country, um, and he steps up to get 10 points with an injury. He's having a team day, not, a, not an Adrian day. He's getting points for us. And a special note for him, uh, his younger brother Patrick was also in the competition with him. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and to be in that kind of shadow, I was really proud of Patrick to be able to step out and stand on his own two feet uh, and, and be recognized as one of the state's best shot putters. Um, the, the second day we started, I believe, with the discus. It's, it's been a while since that meat has, has gone. Mm -hmm. my, my brain's a bit uh, 
blurry, but uh, Adrian, Adrian uh, steps up to get second. He was picked second, places second in the, the discus to score 18 points of our total. Uh, and, then, and then, not that that's not crazy, but some crazy stuff started happening. In the long jump, Cecil Gregg uh, is our lone competitor. He's picked fifth coming into the competition. He's in fourth place going into the final round. And I'm pretty happy because I'm two points up. And I'm feeling pretty good because I've worked numbers. And he, in his final jump, he goes from fourth to first to win a state title. Uh, left a lot of people scratching their head and left us slapping high fives and all sorts of things out there in, in celebration so much so I'm, I'm calling Coach Schmid uh, and just cracking up laughing about the achievement that just happened. Um, then we go to the 100 meters with Keyshawn Carter. He's picked fifth going into the event and he wins. Uh, and another just incredibly special uh, crown to wear, the fastest athlete in Texas. And in Texas, if you're crowned that, you're one of the fastest in the country. Going into the four by two, we're picked second. And of course, relays are double points in Texas. Pick second behind Congress Jetson. Um, our best time going into that was somewhere in the mid 125s, uh, which is fast enough. And I'm thinking 124, maybe at the state meet, maybe get second place. And we win. And not only do we win, uh, those guys skipped the 124s, ran 123.81. Um, just quick splits 21.4 off the front, 20.2 second leg, 21.5 third leg, and 20.1 one third leg right around there for, for our guys it's the number four time it's, yeah it's the number four time run all time in yeah. in the event history across the country and then we're just sitting back waiting for the points to come and uh, with a couple of events left we we knew we had we had done something special and um, if i may i'd like to introduce my coaching staff and a couple of the athletes who were who were able to make it first off um the the shot put champion that i mentioned earlier agent pippery and you can when he stands up you can probably guess where he's uh going to be going next year His younger brother, Patrick Pippery, who was also in the state championship <laughs> chapter. And to our coaching staff, uh, my first assistant, Sean Hamilton, who's relays and horizontal jumps. <laughs> Gary Medor, our throws coach. Chris Bales, our relays coach. Robbie do it, our pole vault coach. That's it. Coach yeah. Green, I've got something for you though. And Coach Schmidt, both, uh, on behalf of the board and the superintendent of schools, this is just a plaque commemorating 2017 UIL <laughs> Class 6A state champions. We're extremely proud of you. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. Thank you. All right, item 2G, Special Board Recognition, Ambassador Awards, Custodial and Maintenance Department Employees, Dr. Stockton. Great, I'd like to invite Marshall Schrader up to the uh, 
uh, to the podium to introduce our ambassador award winners. Marshall. President Bush, Dr. Stockton, members of the board, <coughs> I'd first like to thank you for the opportunity to recognize my employees. Uh, our team cleans and maintains nearly 9 million square feet, uh, completes an average of 40,000 work orders per year, manages many of the district's resources. Uh, we are by nature a complaint department. Uh, we respond when there's a spill, an accident, a breakdown, a problem, all in an effort to give our students an exceptional learning experience. Uh, before I introduce the ambassador recipients, I'd like to take just a moment to recognize members of the maintenance custodial leadership team that are here with us tonight. As I call your name, please stand, be acknowledged, please hold your applause till the end. Uh, Dwight Martin, Assistant Director of Custodial and Maintenance. John Brown, Maintenance Coordinator. Robin Corley, General Craft Supervisor. Sydney Strong, South Custodial Coordinator. George McCloy. South Assistant Custodial Coordinator, Eric Trevino, Custodial Supervisor, Salvador, uh, Salvador Salazar, Custodial Supervisor, Carmen Garcia, Custodial Supervisor, and Oni Alvarado, Custodial Supervisor. <laughs> I'm lucky to have a great team, a leadership team. Uh, and now to introduce our ambassador award recipients. These employees were nominated and voted on by the leadership team in each of their respective areas. Each of these employees are instrumental part of the department's success. From South Maintenance, uh, Mr. Samuel Grig Grigsby, Irrigation Plumber, hire date September 25th, 2012. North Maintenance, Mr. Roy Gill, Carpenter Roofer, hire date July 2nd, 2007. <laughs> From South Custodial, Myra Quintero, uh, Woodlands High School, hire date February 24, 2014. <laughs> From North Custodial, Hanissima Estrada, Conroe High School Evening Lead, hire date May 18, 2015. Director's wildcard select selection is Ms. Linda Trong, South Custodial, College Park High School, hire date November 8th, 1985. <laughs> <laughs> Our last and final is Assistant Director Wildcard, uh, Mr. Cecil Barnaby. He's not able to be with us tonight. Um, he's Conroe High School custodian, hire date December 1st, 1972. Wow. In December, he will be here 45 years with the district. That's awesome. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the board, we just want to say a special thank you for all that you do. You're working behind the scenes. You're not necessarily the ones that the parents see when they come up there for special events. You're not on the stage during the graduation, but none of that would happen without you working so hard behind the scenes. We take great pride in our schools and the environment that we provide for our students and our teachers, and it's because of you that we're able to provide that level of service mm -hmm. to our, our students. So thank you very much for all that you do. We really appreciate it.
Thank you. We appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
we're going to turn the current front door, the part in red right there, the current front door is going to be closed off. We're not going to have a drive to the front of it anymore, so it's going to be very obvious where to pull up and to where to not pull up. This is no longer going to be the entry to this school off the highway. We're going to turn that into the speech area. And this is our elevation. The, the brick colors, we're, we're going to try to emulate the 2008 edition, which sort of emulated the old 50s building. We'll blend those colors together and we'll work that around the building. This, both of these images are the west facing elevation where the parents will arrive. Mm -hmm. It just didn't fit on one sheet, it became too small. So as you see there, it, it's a more common design motif that we have for our current flex schools. And the east facing elevation again, showing how it, it should seamlessly blend with the, uh, with the 2008 edition. By the time we're done, it's gonna look like a, a whole school that was designed at the same time. Upper uh, photo shows the, the bus drop off covered, protected children from the weather. And that's our school. I'm very proud of it. And that's our Q&A. Can I an answer any questions whatsoever about this facility? I have a completion question. Date. Oh. Completion date, 2019. What will, from 105, if I'm driving down 105, what will I see to make me recognize that this is a Conroe ISD school? Uh, there'll be a... I didn't, be, I didn't see kind of a south view, I guess, from... Right, what, the... What is now the entrance that will be the back of the school. Yes, sir. The current uh, lobby there has a bit of a pitched roof on it. Mm -hmm. That's still going to be there. We're just gonna, not going to have a drive up to it. But the new district standard is a monument sign that's LED, and I can assure you, okay. people will know that that's okay. our school. Okay. And the only other question I had was about, I was looking at the lanes, just for fire and safety, I mean, uh, with the way the parking is situated, uh, I, don't, I can't tell from the drawings how wide those lanes are, but I assume we can get a fire truck back there to be yeah. able to swing back in there, because, because we are kind of, I mean, you're gonna need, be on the east or the west side yes sir and uh what we're doing on the east side there's that drive currently exists on the east side of the right. facility however it is a narrow drive yes it's very so narrow. we're working with our civil engineer to reduce the size of the existing pond so we can get a 30-foot lane okay. on the east okay. side buses will be able issue. to pass one another and it's going to be three lanes going out so the people turning left and the people turning right don't have to wait in line behind one another okay, okay. and uh we're going to use the district standard width for the, the passenger car drop off as well. Perfect. Just Thank like you. our flex was. Well, and it's going to be a straight shot. Right now, you have to kind of curve around the building to get in with the way it is. We're, yes, yeah. we're going to take the turn out so the yeah, bus is going to run into the building. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Any other questions? Thank you, Mr. Brewster. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Item 4B Capital Improvement Update. Hey, okay, Mr. Foster. I'd like to take this time to bring you up to speed on the capital improvements we have in progress throughout the district. We're going to start with the Woodlands College Park, our robotics edition. I'm proud to report that this project is complete. Uh, Texas Park has been moving their equipment in. They've had their open house, so they're beginning to use that facility. Uh, there's some details <clears throat> working in the parking lots and things of that nature, but it is uh, ready and will be fully functional when the kids return back for school in August. On the inside, you can see the the uh, robots now have a home, so they're starting to occupy and fill in that space with their stuff. And you can see all their tools and equipment they use to build those fantastic machines uh, in their workshop. At our network operations center, uh, this is the network data infrastructure for the entire district. The, the center itself is the data center itself is essentially complete. Our technology department has begun their very complicated process of moving equipment from the current center to the new center. So that process is underway and is ongoing. Our contractor will be following behind them to occupy and, and reclaim the old data center spaces as new offices uh, for, uh, for other departments within the building. The tech, those technology staff have begun moving downstairs, so they've occupied all the offices we built with this project. This project is scheduled to be complete in the fall time frame. <coughs> So somewhere in around September, we should be done and that contractor demobilized completely. 
our life cycle project, uh, which is working all over the district. I'm going to talk about Galatis Elementary, where we're working on the roof. That roof is progressing just as we would like it to, uh, and is moving along very well. At Gladys, we're also working on the inside of the building, replacing their gym cafeteria floor. It's a multi-purpose space with a rubber floor suitable for both uh, the cafeteria function and the gym function. We're also replacing all the, the metal roof along with the flat roof of this building to give Gladys a fresh, uh, fresh color upgrade on the exterior of that building. At Bush Elementary, we're doing much of the same scope, new flat roof, new metal roof to give it its uh, color revitalization to bring all the roofing materials back into uh, good service standing, get another 20, 30 years out of this building with no trouble at all. Uh, those details are working along really well and it is complete, they're becoming complete on the schedule as we anticipate. At Buckaloo Elementary, we are replacing their multi-purpose floor as well. So same scope of work we're doing at Gladys we're undertaking here. That floor is progressing as scheduled as well. At College Park, uh, we are refinishing the competition gym with new stripes, new graphics to, to match that campus's uh, branding. We are also working on the tennis courts, providing new services on the tennis facilities. At Creighton Elementary, uh, we're replacing a parking lot that had reached the end of its useful service life and to correct some drainage at that campus. Uh, that project is underway. You can see a lot of dirt now. Uh, if we get some favorable weather this week, we'll be pouring concrete on Saturday, uh, and that'll be back in service well before the time that the staff and students come back in August. At David Elementary, we're again, we're replacing their gym floor, so it's another multi-purpose uh, gym and cafeteria shared space, and that project is uh, underway now. The floor is actually reinstalled, waiting on some cleaning and stripes so it is actually a little bit ahead of its schedule. At Haley Elementary, I don't have any pictures yet, but we've mobilized replacing the roof on that building, uh, another roof that reached the end of its uh, life cycle. At the Woodlands High School, we are working on refinishing the tennis courts and tennis facilities there as well uh, to give some new life to that athletic venue. At Buddy Moorhead Stadium, we are doing a regularly scheduled track freshen up where we're putting new structural coat and new stripes on the track surface. We are also working on the tennis court facilities there to refresh those surfaces at the tennis for Conroe High School. At Knox Junior High and our Woodlands Transportation Center project, Knox gets a science classroom addition where we're adding 10 science labs to that building. Uh, the exterior masonry work is complete. Uh, this week we're working on windows and other ex exterior features. The building itself is in a dry condition and is scheduled to open for students in August of this summer. It is progressing rapidly and on the schedule as we anticipate. The current work is to expand the cafeteria space to go along with the additional student capacity that comes with the classrooms. That work is underway and progressing as we'd like. On the interior of that science classroom addition, we're getting into drywall and paint and other finishes. It's a, it's a kind of a tight area, so pictures aren't all that prevalent, but it is proceeding rapidly and as we would anticipate. The Fieldhouse addition, which is another portion of that Knox project, is where we're expanding the Fieldhouse capacity to match the student uh, population on that campus. That project is also moving along very well on the interior finishes, uh, the lockers and things of that nature are being installed as we speak. For the transportation center portion of this project, the exterior, the, the building addition is complete. They're working on the inside to tie those two, the existing building to the new spaces together now. Outside that building, we're doing the utility improvements that go along with the uh, systems that need to be upgraded at that campus, as well as in increasing the parking capacity for buses and bus drivers and things of that nature to go along with the increased capacity in, in that future zone. Our safety and security job, which is not picture friendly because all that work is above the ceiling is progressing well. We're about 20% done with phase two. Uh, that phase goes through uh, the end of December into January and we are making our way through those 13 campuses which are getting camera upgrades, security access control upgrades, door contacts and, and vestibule upgrades as well. At Lucille Bradley Elementary School, uh, this school is scheduled to open in August of 2018, which is right around the corner. Our contractor is wrapping that project up very rapidly, and we will have ownership and possession of that building on July 1st, which is just a couple of weeks away. 
From this picture, you can see that the outside of the building is coming along very nicely. The inside of the building is also coming along very nicely. It's in a cleanup phase where we're getting things together, making punch lists, and getting it ready for furniture deliveries, which start in earnest early in July. Uh, and it's it's actually coming along very, very well. Moving on to Grand Oaks High School, which is also on schedule. It is scheduled to open for students in August of 2018. Uh, the building uh, is progressing nicely, and you can see from the aerial photograph, the athletics venues are beginning to take their shape. The exterior masonry is going along very well, which gives this building its personality and flavor as you, as you drive by it. It's starting to really become a, uh, a nice-looking campus that we can all be very proud of for a very long time. Uh, some of the athletics buildings are, are coming, uh, coming to be as well, so we're looking here at a picture of the the central ticket concession stand restroom grounds uh, storage building that is the central entry point to all the athletic venues for football, baseball, softball, tennis, and the like. At Flex 18, which is a job we broke ground on most recently, it's an intermediate school just south of Grand Oaks High School. Uh, we are installing the foundations for this building. It is on schedule, scheduled for, to open alongside Grand Oaks High School in August of 2018. And then we most recently broke ground on Connor High School, the big renovation project to, on the first part of our master plan for Connor High School. Uh, this summer is primarily dealing with utilities and infrastructure changes that we need to do in order to ensure we can have school next year and build a, a classroom addition uh, while that building is occupied. So we're looking at the area between the rotunda and the main building now, which is Wilson Road, and the, this is a shot through what used to be a parking lot in front of the rotunda. Mm -hmm. We're routing Wilson Road around the new building construction so that we maintain bus operations and have access for students and faculty in all of during the course of construction. Taking turn back, looking back at the main building, we're preparing the main building to accept the new building addition. So we're uh, eliminating some of the skin pieces and preparing to tie the two buildings together because we're. Part of this project is to create mobility across the campus so the new addition will tie directly into the main main campus with uh, common corridors and that is our update all right thank you just don't have anything to do with your time there do you? <laughs> <laughs> bored to death this summer huh? <laughs> thank you mr foster Great. two things stuck out in that report to me one is we were at bradley two weeks ago and there's there landscape there wasn't one piece of grass and now no. it's all grass yeah. and the second one is that flex 18 is dirt yeah. and a year from now we're going to be looking at a finished building which is incredible there, there was no parking lot striping either yeah. <laughs> all right mm -hmm. item 5a preliminary 2017-2018 budget overview dr stock okay darren rice please come and present uh, our budget overview <clears throat> Good evening, President Bush, members of the board, and Dr. Stockton. It is my pleasure to present the preliminary 2017-2018 budget. First, I would like to recognize the finance staff that is here this evening. And as I introduce you, would you please stand? Janice Sowers, Karen Garza, and Cindy Westrup. They're very instrumental in preparation of this budget. So. <laughs> and we'd also like to thank the principals, campus staff, and department uh, for, for working on the budget, getting the budget downloaded into our system, helping us out with that. Without, without them taking on that task, it would be very difficult for our staff. So really appreciate their help. And I'd also like to thank Dr. Hines, Dr. Knoll, and Dr. Stockton for their counsel and their help in preparing this budget. We'd like to begin each of our budget presentation with our financial highlights for the current year. Uh, we received a superior rating for the year ended August 31st, 2015 from the Financial Integrity Rating System of Texas, or the first report, and we anticipate to receive that also for 2016. Uh, the district continues to get recognized from the State Comptroller's Office for our transparency presentations. We received transparency stars for our traditional finances, debt obligations, and contract and procurement presentations. We're the only district to receive all three stars, and we were the first district to ever receive a star. So we're very proud of those accomplishments. Uh, 
Texas Smart Schools, previously known as the FAST Report, it highlights schools in two dimensions, academic performance and cost-effective finances. Conroe ISD is one of three districts that has received five stars, which is the highest rating for seven consecutive years. That list keeps getting smaller. It does. <laughs> <clears throat> Our 2016 ERG position, ERG stands for Education's Resource Group, and they perform an analysis of the 200 largest districts, and their ranking is done on academic and financial performance. The goal is to be in the 1-1 box, and as you can see on the graph, that red dot is uh, CISD right in the middle of the 1-1 box, and we're currently ranked fifth. Our 2016-2017 tax rate comparison, our tax rate of $1.28 is 48 cents lower than our tax rate was in 0506 when it was $1.76. We're currently 19 and a half cents below the average tax rate of our peer districts. And we're 15 cents below the closest district to us, which is Klein. A general fund balance. This chart represents the fund balance of the general fund over the past 10 years. In 2007, we're sitting at $79 million of fund balance. We ended 2016 at $124 million. During this time, the board transferred excess fund balance from the general fund to capital projects, avoiding issuing new debt. The transferred amounts are identified in the red blocks, and the corresponding amounts are listed below. We will now look at the major components that drive the budget, and they begin with our 2017-2018 budget objectives. And they include meet the needs for the 2017-2018 school year. That includes opening of Bradley Elementary. Uh, provide a competitive raise for all and additional salary adjustments for identified areas. And preserve funding for the 2018-2019 budget where we'll, where we'll be opening a new high school and an intermediate school. And as always, we want to achieve high academic outcomes in a cost-efficient manner. <clears throat> Our fund balance analysis based on our 2016-2017 budget of $447.6 million. And once again, our objective is to maintain an unassigned fund balance of 16 to 24% of the annual budget, which gives us about two to three months worth of expenses. Our unassigned fund balance at 831.16 was $119.4 million, which is 26.7% of our budget and $12 million over our high-end target. Our attendance data, state revenue estimates and campus budget allocations rely on our enrollment data. This budget is based on an estimated increase of 1,400 new students and 94% average daily attendance. And our enrollment is estimated at 61,360 students. It is important to note that the expenditure budget is based on enrollment, but our funding from the state comes from our average daily attendance. This graph just shows our enrollment trend in a graphical format showing our 1,536 average student growth we have each year. Certified property values. For budget purposes this year, we use an estimate of 6% property growth. Uh, that'll, that'll generate $1.9 billion worth in a, of additional value, giving us an estimated certified value of $34.4 billion. Now that we have discussed the major components that drive the budget, we will now look at the effect that they have on the budget itself, starting with the 2017-2018 funding estimate. Uh, our tax revenue increase, based on our estimated 6% AV growth, will generate $26.2 million. Looking at state revenue, our 14 new, uh, 1,400 new students will generate $10.6 million. Senate Bill 1, just passed by the legislature, will generate $8 million additional dollars. However, due to the Robin Hood effect or recapture, whatever name you want to call it, our 8.66% AV growth that we experienced in 2016-17, we will actually lose $25.9 million in state funding, giving us a net state revenue decrease of $7.3 million. Uh, TRS on behalf, this is just a pass-through amount that we have to record, and our financials is $1.5 million, giving us a total estimated available funding of $20.4 million. Now looking at the expenditure side of the budget, this is our proposed 2017-2018 teacher hiring schedule. It includes a raise of $1,125 for existing teachers and a beginning teacher salary of $52,500.
Our 2017-2018 proposed salary increase. Our general pay increase is 2% for professional and admin and 3% for our non-exempt staff. That's at $7.3 million. We have police and auxiliary pay adjustments, $363,000. Admin support, education, and business adjustments, $162,000. Instructional support and special ed adjustments, $200,000. And increasing our beginning bus driver pay to $16 an hour is $129,000, giving us a total salary increase of $8,114,731. Any Personnel growth and support for our 1,400 new students in the opening of Bradley Elementary. At the campus level, it includes 105 new teachers, six professionals, and 14 and a half para positions. At the support level, we have 32 support positions but to support those campuses, giving us a total uh, personnel change of 157 and a half positions and a total payroll budget of $8,407,300. Our other expense detail includes increase for our appraisal district fee is $750,000. TRS on behalf, this is the other half of the pass-through of $1.5 million. Our district contribution to TRS is increasing uh, $700,000. Uh, supplies for the new campus and growth, $200,000. Utilities for the new campus and increased cost, $350,000. Uh, technology mobile device manager and web accessibility, $95,000. Fuel for transportation, police, and maintenance, $275,000. And life cycle insurance and other increases, $530,000 for other expense increase of $4.4 million. So now looking at our projected expenditure budget increase for 2017-2018, it includes a salary increase of $8.1 million, additional personnel $8.4 million, a reconciliation of our payroll budget, we do this annually, we're able to, we found a uh, savings of $3 million in there, uh, other expenses increased $4.4 million for total expenditure budget increase $17,922,231. So now looking at the 2017-2018 pro projected budget, budget with revenues and expenditures together. On the revenue side, our amended revenue budget was $453.3 million. We had $20.4 million worth of, worth of available revenue, giving us a projected 17-18 revenue budget of $473.7 million. On the expenditure side, our amended expenditure budget was $455.3 million. We're adding $17.9 million worth of additional expenses, giving us a projected 17-18 expenditure budget of $473.3 million, leaving us with a potential surplus of roughly $400,000. That $17.9 million increase is about 3.9% uh, budget increase on last year's budget. This pie chart shows the budget broken down by major object. It includes payroll, which is 89.2% of our budget. Contracted services, 4.9% of our budget. The largest item in there is our utilities. Uh, supplies and materials is 4.4% of our budget. The largest item in there is fuel. And equipment and other is 1.5% of our budget. Our 2017-2018 proposed tax rate. Uh, we're requesting no change in our tax rate. We'll remain the same, M&O at $1.04, debt service at $0.24 cents for a total tax rate of $1.28. This chart represents a forecast of our fund balance position at the end of 2016-17 based on our proposed 2017-2018 budget of $473.3 million. Once again, our objective is to have approximately two to three months worth of expenses in our budget, and our estimated unassigned fund balance at 831.17 is $128.3 million, which is 27.1% of the budget and $14.7 million over our high-end target. So what is our proposal for the fund balance surplus? We'd like to save the surplus in the general fund balance to support the 2018-2019 budget. Once again, I'd like to note, we're opening a new high school and an intermediate that year, so. <clears throat> Aaron, can I add a yes, sir. on that? The other thing I would say, too, is um, the, the high school obviously is a big component of that, trying to stick some money away. But the other thing that we would like to do, too, is that'll bridge till our next bond mm -hmm. issue. Like we did this last bond issue, 
we're able to do some capital projects that come up. So we're also eyeing that too in the next couple of years. As y'all know, Governor Abbott, Abbott called a special session uh, starting July 18th. Uh, these are the 20 items that are in that call. And the, and the highlighted items are the ones that some could affect us. And, and so I highlighted those, but those are the items on the call. Those, those will affect us. <laughs> <laughs> but one of the points to, to, to really, and I don't know how it factors in, but it doesn't start till July 18th. Yeah. And so anybody's guess is how much this will impact us next year. A lot of school districts with July 1st fiscal years are adopting their budget tonight as we yeah. speak. So, so they're mm -hmm. already adopting their budget. And they're yeah. hoping and praying to get their first check on that. Correct. Mm -hmm. Which we don't have to do. I okay. hope we do too, but we don't Great. have to. Right. right. Yes. So what's next? Uh, we need to finalize revenue, state funding, of course. We have a special session coming up on July 18th. Uh, we'll receive certified values from the appraisal district on July 25th. Um, uh, meetings and hearings, we have the district level planning and decision making committee on July 12th. We have a public hearing on August 1st and 15th and then also budget approval on August 15th. And then also with this presentation, there's reference material back there for y'all's perusal. And this uh, budget presentation is on our website if y'all want to just download it off there. Thank you very much, Ms. Brown. I have a couple of questions. Yes, ma'am. When will we know for sure about MCAD fees? Because I know that their board's going to have to vote on their budget increase. I, I believe they vote in August. Okay. And um, I'm sure in the meantime, it wouldn't hurt to give some feedback to those <laughs> folks on the okay. board because that, that they're proposing a 17% increase. Correct. Which for us is 750000 additional dollars. So uh, I, I've started that process of providing feedback. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we provide 33% of their, of their budget. Right. I mean, there was, there was a good article in mm -hmm. the Courier about this, and uh, I know that we spoke about it, but I was wondering when they voted for sure on that. And, mm -hmm. and certified values, obviously that's going to, we hope not drop too much, but right now what are we looking at? Right now we're about 6.7% increase. Okay. Um, however, there's about $11 billion worth of value under ARB review right now. This is about where we were sitting last year, but last year at this time we were at 13.6% increase and we fell all the way to 86 So we're hoping that they're not as generous <laughs> in a well, sense. Yeah, I don't know just, if that's the word. Just or, mathematically, yeah. we don't anticipate that big a drop. Right. right. Uh, so, so we're just so I, I think close to the 6% okay. is, is probably realistic. Madam President, I have some comments. Yeah. Uh, first, Mr. Rice, congratulations to you and your team on presenting such a positive and a balanced budget. I know for a fact there are many school districts in and around our area that are presenting uh, deficit budgets. Yes, and so I commend you and your staff for that. You. Also, just want to make some comments. I still feel like our, our debt, although high, is well managed. And again, congratulations to you and your team for finding and spotting chances to refinance debt and to save our taxpayers money uh, that we don't have to spend on debt because we can refinance those bonds. And then also being able to, to you and, and Dr. Stockton to the team, to be able to manage capital projects out of cash and again, save our taxpayers uh, the, the future expense of debt obligations, to be able to do it out of cash is very commendable and I just congratulate you and your staff on that. Thank you, sir. Item 5B, consider approval of the 2017-18 teacher hiring schedule, employee raises, and stipends. That's yeah, right. Talk to <laughs> All right, it is my pleasure to recommend the Board of Trustees approve the 2017-2018 teacher hiring schedule, employee raises, and stipends. We believe that early approval of the teacher hiring schedule, raises and stipends, will improve recruitment and retention of district employees. This proposal was recommended by the TASB Compensations Group and 
was shown to you all at the February board workshop. This proposal includes a 2% general pay increase for professional and administrative staff and a 3% general pay increase for non-exempt staff and additional adjustments for identified areas, including bus driver pay starting at $16 per hour. We believe that this proposal will keep SASD competitive with peer school districts in the Houston area. And under this plan, the starting teacher salary will be $52,500 and existing teachers will receive a raise of $1,125. The total cost of this is $8.4 million. At this time, I recommend your approval. So um, I second the motion. All right, any discussion? I just have a comment. I was able to sit in on that workshop back. Uh, Dr. Stockton allowed me to come in and sit in and I was uh, honestly amazed at the depth to which they go through that and it is extensive and it's not just let's come up with a number there was a lot of effort there was a lot of work there was a lot of time uh, spent a lot of team members were in that meeting and uh, again I, I, I commend you that that's a lot of hard work and I think y'all did a great job thank you, thank you. anybody else all right. All those in favor? No opposed? Motion passes. Thank you. <laughs> All right. And 5C, financial reports. Mr. Rice. <laughs> All right. Now for the financial statements for the month of May. And once again, these statements will include our general fund, debt service fund, child nutrition, and self-funded insurance. The first statement we'll start with this evening is our balance sheet. Our balance sheet includes our assets, our liabilities, and our fund balances. And every month we like to take a look at our cash and investments and see, see where they're at. Uh, we'll concentrate here on the general fund. And we start with our cash on hand. We have $500. We have deposits in the bank of $465,000. We have investments in the pools of $121 million. We have our other investments, what are investments less than a year of $74 million, and our longer term investments that are investments that can go out to a year of $51 million. But for total cash investments in the general fund of $247 million. And we like to track our property tax collection, and as you can see, we're still ahead percentage wise of where we were last year, so our collections are coming in nice. Next statement we'll look at is our income statement. Our income statement includes our revenues and expenditures and fund balance. Our revenues are broken down into three categories. They are local and intermediate sources, state program revenues, and federal program revenues. And taking a look at the detail of our local and intermediate revenues, we can see that property tax is the largest generator of revenues in the general fund and debt service, food sales, and child nutrition, and premium contributions in our self-funded insurance. And we can look at our year-to-date expenditure by major category uh, for each of the funds. Our projected increase in uh, fund balance for the general fund is right about $9 million, very similar to where we were last month. Uh, projected fund balance and debt service, no change there. We're anticipating an increase about $4.6 million. Uh, projected fund balance and child nutrition. Uh, this is up a little bit from last month. Uh, $692,000 revenues came in a lot better than, than we expected, so that's, that's, that's very nice for them. Our 2015 bond referendum status. We've currently expended and encumbered $293 million. We have an estimate to complete, to finish, another $224 million, giving us a total pro project forecast for the bond referendum of $517 million, leaving us with about $3.4 million worth of contingency at the end of the project. <clears throat> Self-funded insurance, uh, May was our first tough month. Yeah. We, we Knock on wood, we had, a, we had a good run, but it wasn't too bad. Uh, we had total revenues of $3,777,000. Expenses of $3,929,000 for revenues under expenses for this month of $152,000. However, for the year, we have revenues over expenses of $3,172,000. So still, still looking good there. Just hope the summer's nice to us. Um, participation in our wellness center for the month of May, we had 392 visits at the clinic for a total of the year of 3,892. 
the Conroe site is, is open. open. It is open and operational. Good. Good. And that is located where? Yes. Uh, <laughs> it's off the South Loop. You had to go uh, I don't have the address. It's off the South Loop um, in one of those new well, big Conroe buildings. Family Medicine is? Yeah, Conroe mm -hmm. Family Medicine. Yeah. I haven't been sick yet. <laughs> <laughs> and it is staffed with a with there's actual a, a doctor in that facility mm -hmm. so you're not just seeing a PA or a, or a nurse's assistant uh, investments for the month of May uh, we ended May with a par value of 483 million dollars invested the WAM of our pools WAM stands for weighted average maturity for those of you they hear me say WAM every month and I'm like what is WAM it's weighted average maturity of the pools is one day that's overnight money and we're yielding 1.03 uh, percent it's nice to be able to say percent nowadays <laughs> Uh, the weighted average maturity of our other investments, these are investments that are less than a year, is 142 days and they're yielding 1.28%. The WAM of our longer term investments, TCG Investment Advisors, is 541 days and we're yielding 1.16%. And as we know, there's a lag on those longer term investments. As rates go up quickly, it's just harder. As those investments roll off, they'll be able to invest in higher. So we'll see that turn around the other way. And it's still better than the one day yield. Yes, sir. Yes. And when the 10 years only at 2.2, .2, it's a little hard to put. Yeah, to make any ground. Right. Correct. So when we combine our full portfolio, our WAM is 76 days with a yield of 1.08%. And our benchmark, which is the 90 day T bill, is at 92 basis points. So we're still looking good. Thank you, Mr. Rice. Good job, Darren. Thanks, sir. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Last item on the agenda, okay. item 5A, proposed termination for good cause and authorized notice proposing termination. Thank you, Mrs. Bush. The district tonight is um, asking that the board propose the termination of term contract employee Maria Rodriguez for violating the terms of her contract, which is good cause, um, under Texas Education Code section 21.211. If you um, vote to propose a termination notice will be sent to Ms. Rodriguez and she will have a period of time in which she could request a hearing from the hearing examiner. If no question or no uh, hearing is requested, your July meeting will be asking for you to go ahead and terminate her employment. Okay. Madam President, I move that the board propose termination of the term contract of Maria Rodriguez for good cause and further move that the board authorize the superintendent to provide Ms. Rodriguez notice of this action. All right. Second. All those, any discussion? All those in favor? All right. Motion passes and we are adjourned. <laughs>